Hello, and welcome to Behind the Bar, See the Music at the School of American Ballet. My name is Aaron Severini, and I'm the music teacher. George Balanchine famously said, see the music, hear the dance. And today, you'll have a chance to see the music and its place of prominence throughout the SAB curriculum. Music and musicality are crucial components to the training at SAB because of what the Balanchine aesthetic requires a dancer to achieve in movement. When I came to SAB, uh, along with uh, ballet training, I uh, studied music. I always wanted to have a career in music. I loved music and ballet. I uh, felt a very special connection to uh, composing and studying music at Juilliard. So now, here, I'm uh, very excited to have an opportunity to share my passion for music and dance with the next generation of dancers at SAB. Okay, so let's step inside the studio and see how live music is an essential component to every class we teach at SAB. The School of American Ballet was founded by George Balanchine, and he said, music is always first. I cannot move, I cannot even want to move unless I hear the music first. The music is the reason to move. And so music plays the most important element almost at our school. To begin on time, to end on time, to be on time is essential to a Balanchine student, a Balanchine dancer, a Balanchine teacher. I started at my mom's dance studio in New Jersey and we had recorded music. So when I came here, it was like it opened up this whole new world, this completely different experience where we had these beautiful studios, this incredible training, and then of course, live music. And it was just so special. Working with the faculty here is is really incredible because they have such clear ideas about what they want. So, you know, the pressure is really on to make sure that you can support their ideas and support the dancers. And also just because Balanchine himself was such a great musician, that is something that I think has been upheld and, and every teacher here has such a commitment to musicality that it helps make our jobs so much more enjoyable. With a the musician in the classroom, we can set the mood of the music. For example, when I do Grand Plié, I might just want an arpeggio and finish. And I can say, could you please play an arpeggio, Arcadi? And he plays it. Or if I get into the center and I feel like a big, wonderful waltz, I could say, play Serenade, the waltz from Serenade. Or I could say Scott Joplin if I want a little jazzy or a polka. I mean, you have so many possibilities when you have fantastic pianists in the studio with you. Well, I teach a lot of the younger students. So I, I teach the Little Dancers program, which is four and five-year-olds, and also the prep division, which is the six and seven and sometimes eight-year-olds. So a lot of their like first experiences with ballet. We count the music a lot. That is just, I think, something that gets missed sometimes. You know, it's like a new skill. They have to be introduced to the music. They have to learn what the introduction is, which sometimes we do four counts of music. Sometimes we do two counts of music. Sometimes the teacher says preparation, one, two. So to be introduced to that at a young age, I don't think it's lost on them. Like they say hello to the pianist when they walk in and we ask the pianist questions and we work together. And so then when they move into the children's division and into intermediate and advanced, I think what it does is it fosters that sense of respect that they have a craft too, just like what we're practicing. And so it creates this really special relationship. Having live music in the classroom has been a wonderful experience. The pianists that are there, you get to know them, they get to know you. And I really, really, like, I'm so grateful that they do what they do every day from morning till night and that they sound so amazing. I know there are many like schools and studios that don't have live music and I'm very grateful for having it at SAB. I think having a live pianist is much more helpful to use the musicality when I'm dancing. When I am like tired, the live music really like helps me dance better and dance gracefully when it's a waltz or when it's a jump. This is kind of part of their musical education too, and I think um, classical music can sometimes be intimidating. And mixing in different types is just a really wonderful way to open up the ear so that they can appreciate as many kinds of music as they can. I think if you're familiar with the tune and you can kind of sing it along, it definitely helps when you're doing something grueling. But sometimes it's just nice to listen and get lost in the music. 
At the end of the year, when we put on our final big show, our workshop performance, the dancers have the experience of seeing how the music is the floor of the ballet, of a Balanchine ballet, and how each st step fits into, into that. That without the music, there's nothing. Right? But I learned that, especially with Mr. Balanchine's ballet, you could sing the step to the music, like down, up, up, down, up, down, and passe, back, and three, and four, down. So I always have them either count the rhythm out, or count the counts, or sing the step. And that way, it stays with you forever. The musicality in the classroom carries on in the ballets. It's so special, you know, to have the live accompaniment. It's beautiful, it's inspiring. It's just this amazing thing that we have here that we know not every other studio is lucky enough to have. So we're just thankful to be able to have that opportunity and that experience for our students. Our SAB students deepen their musical education away from the bar too, and that's where I come in with music class. The first year introduces B1 and Intermediate Men with the fundamental elements of music. We have basic ear training, theory, and piano studies. The second year, a greater focus is placed on ear training while furthering their proficiency at the piano. Balanchine wanted his students to have an understanding in music where they could expand on their learned and innate sense of musicality so they could perform as ballets. He wanted his dancers to understand music the way that he did. Overall, it has been an amazing help for my classes, especially when it comes to musicality for combos. I can be more on the music and the teachers are noticing a lot more. Not always hearing, oh, you're behind on the music, you're ahead of the music. It really helped me out. The students that are at SAB do have an innate sense of musicality. And what I'm trying to give them is more tools, really, more musical tools that they can use. It really can be helpful, especially if a choreographer decides to use the musical structure or instrumentation as a direct guide for their choreography. I think the music classes have helped me understand the deeper concepts behind the music that I dance to. I think it's helped me connect to the music too, more. I teach music to so many uh, levels um, by tailoring the curriculum for each student. I go at the pace that is right for them. One way I like to connect uh, what they're doing in their ballet classes to what they do in this music room, I will have them first learn the basics about what a quarter note is, what a quarter rest is, and a half note, eighth note, and all those things. And then I'll put that up on a projector, and instead of going to the piano, which normally would do, I have them do a tondu sort of combination to that rhythm, and they'll read it, you know, quarter, rest, and then half, you know, whatever it might be. Um, it really does help them internalize rhythm, and also uh, if we're trying to learn how to play the piano or learn how to read music, it's definitely a way to um, start that process with someone who has never taken music before. I never knew how to read sheet music before, but I mean, now I know. So I really just kind of want to like experiment with what I can do with this newfound knowledge. <laughs> when studying music for dance, I like to organize the curriculum so that way, if students are going to see a specific New York City Ballet program, uh, let's say it's a Stravinsky festival, I will focus on Stravinsky's music, on the history, the style, uh, the influences. I want them to attend a New York City Ballet performance and watch and listen to something they have just learned about uh, so they're prepared before they even see the ballet. I would just say it's been really interesting, especially getting to learn pieces of music from ballets that I've learned and that I've seen. It was more fun learning those pieces of music, knowing like the dances that go with it and the choreography that goes with it. Overall, within the curriculum, my goal is to provide as much information a dancer might need as a professional dancer, a choreographer, as a teacher. I'm always thinking of what Balanchine knew about music, the tools that he had, and uh, trying to give students as much of that as possible in the time that I have with them.
The culmination of all this musical training is perhaps best seen in our student choreography workshop, in which our advanced students choreograph on their peers for an in-studio performance. I knew I wanted to choreograph because it's my final year after a long time at the school, and I've always thought that it was one of the coolest programs that they have here. It happens right at the beginning of the year. My role uh, in the student choreography workshop is first and foremost to guide students in the music selection process. My music was composed by Claude Debussy, and um, it's his first string quartet in G minor and it's actually part of the only string quartet he ever composed. It immediately became my main source of inspiration. I thought it was very playful and imaginative, and yeah, I thought it would lend itself well to a group of teenage dancers. Some students, they'll come in and they know exactly what they want. They'll already have it, they found the inspiration. Other students have a little bit of trouble connecting with something, and I'll ask them the questions, and you know, what, what do you want to do, and I'll put together a music selection, and that might work for them. I met with Mr. Severini before I began choreographing, and his knowledge is just, it's pretty amazing. I mean, he can listen to a piece and immediately think of like five others that are sort of similar. But he loved my piece, and he said he was glad to see someone choose it, and so he really gave me the confidence to go for it. I think having a foundation in dance does uh, help when working with a student choreographer in the sense that I do understand what it is like to come at this from both a music and dance perspective along with their innate ability and talent, um, the more musical tools I can give them, the more they might be able to see in the music. I listened to the music. It was very, it has a very quiet ending. I love when ballets or pieces, especially if they do get very grand at a certain point, have a quiet ending. I think it's sometimes even more powerful than a big ending. So I knew I wanted the quiet ending to be special. And I don't know, I was like, just like, let me play around a little bit. And that's kind of what I saw in my head and I made them do it. And then eventually they loved it. And I was like, I told you it was worth it. Yeah, it did end up being kind of a special moment, I think of the whole thing. <laughs> I hope I'm gonna continue to choreograph in the future. I'd love to, I'm so glad that it's kind of a skill that I have now. Obviously one, I have to develop a lot more, but I just feel like I have a nice foundation and that if an opportunity comes, I'm definitely going to jump on it. We hope you've enjoyed seeing the music and how it plays a vital role in everything we do here at SAB. As a nonprofit organization, we depend greatly on our supporters and SAB members to ensure that we can provide the highest caliber of training to as many students as possible. If you want to help support our mission, please visit sab.org forward slash donate to make a gift. Every contribution really does make a difference for our students. So thank you for joining us for our second edition of Behind the Bar.